Hello and welcome to HappilyEducated.com. Today I'm going to be talking about Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which is a theory of human motivation. Um, now, I'm just a big fan of motivation theories in general because they help me understand why people, myself included, do what they do. And admittedly, this particular theory is a bit outdated, uh, having been proposed by Abraham Maslow in the 1940s, but I still think it's useful and thought-provoking. So basically, Maslow suggests that people have certain needs, some of which must be met before others can be sought. Uh, these needs are ranked according to how essential they are to a human's ability to survive and flourish. So for example, you need food and water and air to survive, so these would be your most basic fundamental needs. According to Maslow, a human or a person cannot pursue his or her higher level needs, for example, the need for love, until those lower level needs are met. Or in other words, you know, if you're hungry or starving, um, finding food is going to be more important to you or you're going to be more motivated to do that than you will be motivated to do anything else. So this hierarchy of needs is typically represented as a pyramid with the lowest level needs on the bottom. And there are five levels to the pyramid. Um, so from the bottom up, these are, as we mentioned, physiological needs. Uh, those being your need for food, water, air, sleep, those things you simply cannot survive without. The second level of the hierarchy be your needs for safety and security. So do you have a roof over your head at night? Uh, do you have a job that you're fairly sure to be able to keep for a while? Uh, or do you live in a safe neighborhood? The third level of the hierarchy is the need for love or belongingness. And this would have to do with your relationships, basically. You know, do you have friends and family or some relationship in which you experience intimacy? And fourth level up uh, is need for esteem. So your personal sense of worth or accomplishment um, or confidence even. And the highest level of all is what Maslow referred to as self-actualization. So, you know, your self-awareness, um, ability, you know, to grow as a person, personal growth, or to exercise your own creativity, those sorts of things. Um, and there's a lot of room for debate about the order and the contents of these levels. And it's not even really clear that, you know, people must get their low, all their lower level needs met before they can pursue their higher level needs. Uh, and so this is, you know, what I was talking about when I said it's a little outdated. Um, but based on my personal experience, there is at least one aspect of Maslow's theory that I totally believe in. Um, I can say with absolute certainty that it is pointless for me to try to pursue any higher level needs if my physiological needs are not met. So if I'm hungry or thirsty or I need to go to the bathroom or I'm tired, um, I should immediately do whatever I can to get, satisfy those needs because I'm really not able to do a good job of anything else until I do. Uh, you know, sometimes I try to delay taking care of my physiological needs for whatever reason, saying to myself, you know, oh, I'll eat as soon as I finish writing this post. Um, but this is always a bad idea. You know, I, I realize that when I do this, at least half of my attention is diverted to thoughts of food or water or whatever it is that my body wants. Um, and I end up wasting a ton of time and mental energy basically trying to control or restrain myself when it would have been simpler to just do what I needed to do to meet my physiological needs right from the start. Uh, so knowing this, you know, also at times helps me understand other people's behavior. For imagine, or imagine, for example, a child who hadn't had breakfast or who had nothing but chips and soda for lunch. Should this child be expected to focus on learning his or her multiplication tables at school? You know, I know that I would not be able to. Or what about an adult who can't focus on his or her job because, you know, he's dealing with a splitting headache or concern about being able to pay the bills on time or maybe the loss of a close friend? You know, these last two examples, of course, are not physiological needs, but I think they are equally legitimate and worthy of compassion. Um, so, you know, at times I'm taken aback by how rude and unfriendly people can be for no apparent reason. Examples of this might include aggressive drivers or the person who scowls at you in the grocery store as they block the whole aisle with their cart. Um, you know, and when I encounter these unpleasant individuals, it helps to remind myself that I have no idea where they are on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
you know, even if the hierarchy is not completely accurate. I can totally understand why someone whose fundamental or basic needs weren't met would have trouble simply being nice. I am not always as nice as I would like to be, but it's definitely easier for me to be nice if I am well-fed, rested, um, you know, I feel safe and secure or confident that my friends and family love me, those sorts of things. So since I can't possibly know just by looking at a person, um, you know, if he or she is struggling to get his, her needs met, uh, you know, I, I figure it's best to just give that person the benefit of the doubt. So because it is awfully hard to be your best or do your best, sorry, <coughs> ouch, I need some water. I should do that before I finish this, but I'm not going to. Um, so anyway, I interrupted myself. As I was saying, um, because it's so difficult, nearly impossible to be your best or do your best if your basic needs aren't met, I feel that we should do everything in our power, everything we can to help people have access to the resources they need to satisfy their needs. Um, and that way, everyone can engage in happy learning.